Before we talk about the kind of behaviors quality men notice in a woman, I think it's important to establish what is a quality man? Because the reality is, is there's a lot of people out there that are men, but are they quality men when it comes to dating, mating, or relating? And more importantly, are there quality men when it comes to relationship? Mm -hmm. So I identify a quality man as a man with character, a man who's kind, a man who is got his life in order. I mean, in other words, he's got his together, so to speak, okay? I also believe a quality man is intentional when it comes to the dating process. And what I mean by intentional is that he is desirous of a significant relationship. In other words, a relationship where two people either move in together, get married, or they can live together apart, but they are actually teammates with one another, they are partners with one another. That to me is the illustration of a quality man. Does he have good character? Is he kind? Does he have his act together? And more importantly, is he intentional? However, we've got to even go deeper than that because the real quality man mm -hmm. also has a sense of emotional IQ. He has emotional maturity. And more importantly, he has the relationship skills to actually develop a significant relationship with someone. Now, sadly, we do have a significant percentage of men and women who are deeply wounded from childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas. When I said deeply wounded, let me rewind that. They have not, that we have a significant percentage of human beings who haven't healed from childhood wounds and adult traumas that makes it very difficult for them to be in a significant relationship. And because of that, whether it's a man or a woman, it's difficult for them to notice the beautiful qualities within another person if these people are blinded because they are suffering on the inside. You know, I, I know a significant number of men who are suffering on the inside. They were hurt in their past relationships, just like you ladies have been as well. And many of these men have put up walls. It makes it difficult for them to lean into a relationship. This is why if you're in the active dating marketplace, it's important to learn how to vet for emotional maturity. In fact, that's my whole area of expertise as a coach. I help women craft the questions they should be asking in the early stages based on their personality to really uncover, is this person worthy of me giving my heart? And sadly, many of you ladies have a broken picker. So if you need some help with that, right, there's a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Now, before we jump into these five beautiful qualities, these behaviors men find incredibly attractive, I want to address something that I heard on a podcast today. Now, if you're not familiar with the work of Esther Perel, Esther Perel, let me grab a copy of her book. Uh, where is her book? Oh, it's somewhere here. Mating, oh, here it is. Mating in Captivity. Mating in Captivity. She has a great podcast. You may want to listen to it. By the way, all the books I recommend are in the link below under Jonathan Recommend Books in the description of this video. She was talking about, I believe it was an article she had read, but the, she talked about artificial intimacy. Do you know, we have artificial intelligence now that helps people write essays for school and to do a lot of tasks for them. And we also now have bots or robots, if you will, or artificial intelligence that can actually create intimacy with someone or create a connection with someone on an artificial level. But we're talking about some AI program. I'm talking about, or what she was talking about, is the artificial intelligence two people have with each other, and the, or excuse me, the artificial intimacy two people have with each other because they use their devices to connect with one another over the phone. They're using their devices to connect. Most of their conversation is text messaging, and there's this perceived sense of intimacy in these dynamics. There's a perceived sense of intimacy with people who are communicating incessantly via text message. But what's actually happening is artificial intimacy. It's not real intimacy. Ladies, true intimacy is built 
through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends. That's how you can really connect with someone at a much deeper level when you're actually face to face with them. And just like in the TV show, Love is Blind, where two people in separate pods spent hours upon hours upon hours communicating with one another, only to then be in a blind environment, only to meet. And many of the couples, after they thought they have fallen in love with this person, found out that it was false love. See, because real love, and, and now while some of the couples in the most recent season, actually three of the five couples ended in, in marriage, which is actually an amazing statistic for that show because most of them fail. It's an interesting testament. However, in most cases, and certainly out in the real world, like the rest of us are in, because these people are possibly staying together because it's a show and they get their five, 15 minutes of fame. I'm here to say real intimacy is built in the doing of things together, the experiencing of one another, and not the artificial way it is currently happening today. Now, why is this so critically important to know? Because folks, many of you find yourselves in relationships or perceived relationships that are merely cyber relationships, they're situationships, they're not real relationships built in the doing. And quite frankly, if you're not exploring that type of relationship, you might find yourself sadly disappointed over and over again. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. So today I want to talk about some good stuff because I do sometimes talk about the negative stuff, but I am happy to report that I have several success stories under my belt with some new clients. They are happy in, in a significant relationship. They're actually feeling true love because they know the difference. And it's because these folks have decided to reprogram themselves. I think most of us are running on old software, okay? And because of that old software, that clouds our judgment, it clouds our experiences, and most importantly, it clouds us from actually connecting from a heart-centered way with another human being. So my work is all about the reboot. It's not the 2.0, it's not the 3.0. I'm giving you the 4.0 because life is moving so fast, as Ferris Bueller said in the movie, life moves pretty fast. So you have to stop and look around, but look around with intelligence, with intentionality. And thankfully you've landed on my video, you've landed on my show, you follow me. Thank you for those that do follow me. And if my content does resonate with you, please hit that like button, please share this video, please subscribe to my channel. So what are those beautiful behaviors men notice? I think the first one is so obvious. And yet, as a single man, when I was out in the dating realm, I can tell you, that I didn't experience this as frequently as you might think. And the first behavior is what I call easygoing, chill, and agreeable. That's right, easygoing, chill, and agreeable. I can tell you, as a, when I was single, and thankfully I've been in a significant relationship, which will be, it's 355 days as of today. I'm in a relationship with that beautiful woman right there, Marie. And she embodies easygoing, chill, and agreeable. You've seen her on the videos. However, there have been plenty of first dates that I've gone on where a woman is literally wearing resting bitch face. It's literally like pulling teeth because I recognize to some degree, you're, you know, we, human beings date with their own desires in mind, okay? And when you're focused on your own desires, oftentimes you're, you're putting on this air of, of, of arrogance, an error of attitude, an error of entitlement. Now, not all women do this, but a significant percentage of women do this. And I'm here to say that while I oftentimes espouse that you should interrogate people in the dating process, right, frankly, I mean, do a lot of that work over the phone before you ever meet. The first date should be fun. Well, the first date is really a meet and greet, but that first meet and greet should be fun. It should be easy. It should be easygoing. It should be chill. It should be two people just enjoying each other's company to see if they pass the sniff test. And the sniff test is just like two dogs coming up to each other, sniffing one another to see if they like each other. That's what a meet and greet is. 
And so I invite you all to show up at your meet, next meet and greet with an easygoing, chill, and agreeable demeanor, okay? Number two, men find this highly attractive and they notice women who have full lives that have passion for their life. You know, there's a big difference between having a busy life that's full versus a rich life of, of your passions. In other words, like for example, in Marie's case, she traveled, she'd seen, she's been to 68 countries. Now I know that's kind of the exception, not the rule, but where are your passions and do you exploit those passions? And what I mean to say is, do, do, you, live for, do you live to work or do you work to live? You know, do you work to live and, and demonstrate those passions, but yet many people have a full life that's consumed with busyness. And yet what's highly attractive are those people that have a passion for life. Ladies, you're attracted to men who have a passion for life. Well, it goes the same way. In fact, everything I'm sharing here is, is equal to both genders. Number three, unapologetic for past choices. Unapologetic for past choices. Look, many people have found themselves in their second or third significant relationship by the time they get to midlife. And midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. That's the demographic I speak to. So with that said, being unapologetic about your past means not being a victim to your past experiences. It's what did I learn from my past experiences? How did my past experience shape who I am today? That's a significant way of, a, that's a highly attractive behavior for a quality man. Now, let me just say this, coming back to quality men. Look, I recognize that there are a significant percentage of men who are deeply wounded, as I said earlier, from their childhood wounds and adult traumas that don't make them very good candidates to be in relationship. It's probably 70, 80% of men and women alike probably aren't really capable of a significant, a, a, a significant, healthy, happy relationship. Most everybody's capable of some sort of relationships. There are friends with benefits relationships. There are casual relationships. There are situationships. Certainly, there are plenty of people capable of some sort of mediocre relationship. Those that are really capable of something deeper is really a smaller percentage of people. That's the reality of it. We may not like it, but that's the truth, at least the way I perceive the truth. You have to decide that for yourself. So part of dating is a vetting process. It's to vet this person for their emotional maturity. It's to vet them for their relationship skills. Do they live in a sense of victim consciousness or are they in victor consciousness? Do they know how to communicate when there's a difference of opinion? Do they actively listen to your point of view? Do they acknowledge your point of view and even accept your point of view as being true for you? See, that's a person that can actually resolve conflicts with you. Do you know men and women alike have terrible res conflict resolution skills? That's the number one reason why most significant relationships fail is their inability to resolve their differences. Well, certainly there are times when you can agree to disagree, but for the most part, Strong, healthy relationships have that capacity to listen, acknowledge, and validate another person's point of view. And as I said, coming back to unapologetic about one's past, we all have a past. But if you're living in victim consciousness, you're going to carry that past with you in every relationship thereafter if you haven't healed from it. Number four, this is obvious, a sense of humor. And more importantly, appreciating the other person's sense of humor. I can tell you that, you know, I've got a, my, I'm a pain in the ass when it comes to my sense of humor. I'm a bit sarcastic, crass, and can be even childlike. Thankfully, my sweetheart, at least she accepts my sense of humor. And we find our mutual banter between the two of us, which you two have witnessed on our videos, it's our style of bantering with one another. We've gotten accused of being, you know, like I've, we've been uptight with each other. No, it's just the way we banter with one another. It's where we find our joy in giving each other a little bit now and then. That's where our sense of humor lies. Whether you have a dry wit, sarcastic, dark wit, whatever it is, 
finding that mutual sense of humor, finding that space where you have a sense of humor and they appreciate, you appreciate their sense of humor and they appreciate yours because sense of humor is certainly part of the, it makes the monotonous a little bit more uh, acceptable. But more importantly, do you know children laugh 500 times a day and adults laugh five times a day? I'm making up that number. It's something to that effect. Humor is what I think can bond two people together. And last but not least, I said this before, is about communication, but I want to go deeper. What men find this particular capacity incredibly attractive is people that are good listeners, but more importantly, they're interesting and engaging in their conversations. You know, I, I think, and by the way, men are just as equally bad at this as women are. I think human beings are bad. A lot of human beings are, are unskilled at being a good listener and more importantly, being engaging in conversation. You know, I've often heard women say in 10,000 words what men can say in 10 words, okay? Women oftentimes talk in stories and they go on and on and on. But what a man and woman appreciate is succinct conversation that actually has some value, that has some meat to it. Instead of, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. My little bit from Seinfeld, my Kramer there. People that have good listeners and also are interesting and engaging, those are people that we appreciate being around. So I invite you, if you're weak in any of these areas, work on these areas for yourself. And more importantly, you should, listen, ladies, it isn't so much about how trying to make him like you. You have to decide if you like him. If he's weak in these capacities, in any of these areas, you have to ask yourself, is this a person you want to invest your heart in? Because at the end of the day, listen, we get one chance at this go around on this third rock from the sun, make the most of it make the most of it. Don't choose partners that are incapable of a significant relationship. Learn how to be a better picker in relationship. Start from an empowered place from within yourself, but more importantly, and there are abundance of good people. Your job is learning how to do a better job at picking the good ones out of the ones who are, for lack of a better word, broken. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please hit that like button. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. And again, in the comments, in the description are all the links to connect with me. All right. For those who know my format, this is the Q&A time. If you